Hey, it's Jonathan from Bad Orange Entertainment, and today I'm here to guide you through the behind the scenes of The Purge. Now, the Purge was a really interesting project that we decided to tackle because we decided to go into uh, post -produ or pre production pretty last minute. I was honestly looking for a project to do because I was stuck in Miami because of coronavirus, and I figured that if I'm going to be stuck here for give or take five months, I might as well do something productive. So I started doing some script scouting, and honestly, I'd never directed a script that wasn't my own before, so I figured that that would be my next challenge as a director. So I went ahead and I stumbled across The Purge by Roy Wilson, and the, on paper, it sounded like it was going to be a very simple shoot. You have two leads, you have uh, two secondary characters that don't come in towards, until towards the end of the screenplay, and it all takes place in one location, and albeit a very cheap location, so I thought this was definitely going to be the script for me. I read through it, and I thought that, you know, even though it's dialogue heavy, I think that a lot of this could work. So it was a challenge kind of to figure out where we were going to shoot this, because if you've ever rented out a warehouse before, you would know that's pretty expensive. So I was looking at anywhere from the range of like 10 grand to 20 grand. It was ridiculous. Um, however, eventually I kind of got a steal because I was going, uh, looking around in areas that were west of I-95 and I came across this 3000 square foot lot. And uh, the place was honestly a shithole, but that's exactly what I needed. Uh, I had no air conditioning. There was a little bit of you know dry rot in the ceilings, etc. cetera. Um, there were wires hanging down, but it's exactly what I needed because um, per the request of the script, I needed to build a construction site. So I went ahead and uh, I got to work with my team. Um, Sebastian Delgado, one of very talented director of photography, I worked with also another excellent gaffer, um, Aaron Collier, as well as my production assistant, and uh, as well as an actor, Ethan Toth. And about a week before production started, we just spent the entire time just building the sets. And honestly, a lot of it just consisted of just buying construction equipment or just finding like old stuff in attics and just spreading it around and just using divide like huge construction plastic dividing sheets to just do that. And it was interesting when we were first figuring out how we were gonna do this like perch overlook into the city because uh, initially we were gonna try green screen with that. But the problem was when we actually folded this green screen um, across this wall, which we were gonna look at, which we were gonna see as our perch because essentially this was gonna be a, a high rise construction site that had been abandoned and you'd be able to look off the construction site into the city below um, with like no barriers. That was the idea to create that illusion. But unfortunately, when we put up our green mat and we decided to go with green, or we, it was a blue mat, and we decided to go with blue um, because we figured that might that was probably gonna be the best in terms of compositing for what we were going for. Uh, Newsflash, we were an idiot and we basically got material that was very reflective, so we couldn't really use it. So what we ended up opting for instead, which our gaffer did a great job of, is actually using a bunch of LED lights to emulate that sunlight and just kind of mess around with the black magic's temperature that we were shooting on to really get that uh, sunlight effect. But uh, basically that took us a couple days to build. And then it was a matter of selecting our actors beforehand. And honestly, I looked at the auditions and I came across two people. Um, that was Chad Mosley and uh, Hope Crownover. I, I thought they fit the roles pretty well. Um, so they ended up showing up on set uh, the night before, or and they ended up coming in on that first day of shooting, and we were really excited to get going. And honestly, the first cut, like I'd say, hour or two went pretty smoothly, but we were noticing that we were noticeably behind schedule, and that's mainly because a lot doesn't happen in the script, and there's a lot of needless okay. events. Um, the table, That's the only thing that we need. That oh yeah, because this scene he. Why are we interluding from him opening the case of the gun, going to check out some pigeons, and then coming back to set up a gun? Yes. It makes no sense. So Alright, so let's do it. Chop. chop the fucking noise too. Need to put it. Has no place in the script, and a lot of that was happening. So it was difficult to shoot because we had to keep setting up for these scenarios that really didn't add for a whole lot. And of course, I was an idiot here because I tried to be the Elon Musk of filmmaking and saying, "Oh yeah, I can shoot 90 minutes worth of screen, you know, of screen time in three days." You can't do that. It's impossible. It was a very short sighted on my part to believe that was going to happen. I think communication is a big, important thing too, right? Because you want to go ahead and 
make sure that your actors, or you want to make sure that you facilitate an environment on your set where there's communication. If some, and if there's a bad idea, that someone on your staff is going to go and communicate to you with that. And that, I guess that was my fault for, I guess, not setting that expectation out the gate. So after our first day, we realized that we needed to make some adjustments just because we were running behind schedule and it was pain in the ass. It was really hot in there because there was new AC. Um, and because the dialogue or because the script itself was so dialogue heavy, um, it was a lot for our actors to memorize. So after that first day, we went ahead and we reevaluated how the script was going to go. And um, second day, I'd say went a little bit better, but it was getting a little frustrating because there was one scene in particular that we were trying to shoot. Uh, and at this point, we already cut some of the stuff in the script. And by this point, I realized that uh, we could have kept the actors there for a couple more days. Um, and, I, and I was considering it, but at the end of the day, I really didn't think this extra footage was going to make the film better. Uh, and I think that the film, the concept that the writer was going for would definitely be better suited for a short film. So. Once I accepted that reality, it was a lot easier to get through. But I'll never forget there was a particular moment where I was with my uh, with my actors and my DP, and it was the end of the day, and we were all really sweaty and quite frankly frustrated. And our uh, our basically our our slate uh, had a screw that fell out, and therefore I had to grab the top of the slate and like bang it to uh, to start the take. And my DP looked at me and it's like uh, I didn't get that. I hit it again, it's like, oh, sorry, you just need to clap it. So it was a very frustrating thing where it looked like I was about to throw it at him. So uh, after that day, I basically came home and I realized this production was going to truly be fucked unless I really decided to uh, streamline the entirety of that last third of the script. Um, and at this point, we had probably shot maybe 10 minutes. And I'm like, oh, fuck, you know, even for a short, we need to make sure that, you know, we cover all the bases here. So I sat down and I reworked the script. I didn't rewrite, I rewrote uh, the last scene a little bit, but for the most part, I just used all of the original uh, writer's um, dialogue, that of Roy Wilson, and just streamlined it into the most important parts of the script to still make the story flow and to still have that resolution that it needed to. So I was up until about 4 a.m. the next day, uh, and I remember I got three hours of sleep. Um, my production assistant went ahead and picked me up and uh, we went over to set, we got everything set up, and this day was definitely the most fun. We got a lot out of our shooting. Um, I took some creative liberties in terms of how things played out. So we were able to get this really nice, like Miami signature pink, blue, green tone for the night scenes that we were shooting indoors to kind of emulate that city light. And it was just a lot of fun, as well as getting Jordan Turnier and Ethan Toth, which are fantastic people to work with. They have such comedic chemistry. Uh, with each other. Matter of fact, they had such good comedic chemistry that I wanted to make a show specifically for them. And that's exactly what the tub was that we shot only about a week later. Um, it was not the concept that I came up with while I was shooting with The Perch. Or actually while I was uh, I was working with uh, Sebastian Delgado on his music video, uh, The Storm, for, for the local artist Salou. And that was an experience all on its own. But anyways, back to the perch that last day was very interesting and it was going pretty smoothly and we were on schedule and we were about to shoot the last scene when uh, my director of photography, um, Sebastian, had a little bit of an issue with uh, a tripod that really wasn't meant to carry the amount of weight that this rig Blackmagic had. So lo and behold, the tripod actually capsized and it hit the ground. When it did that, it damaged or it seemed like it loosened the USB-C port which we were recording all of our uh, information. We were recording all of our, of our information to this two terabyte uh, Samsung T5 drive. And when that happened, I couldn't get the Blackmagic to read that card. So we're like, oh shit. Now we have to rely on the internal SD card. We only had 10 minutes of footage left after that. Not only that, but the fall actually damaged the battery pack. We were running around like headless chickens trying to figure out how we were gonna shoot this last scene. So it got to the point where Sebastian and I were like, okay, set up here, up, click. We got what we need, instant cut. All right, move to the next thing, cut because now we were on a severe time frame because uh, we were about to run out of battery and we were running out of runtime. Um, so eventually we finished shooting what we needed to do and then we had about uh, like five minutes left and we were running around, we were just shooting all the B-roll shots that we needed that we were putting off until the end. And literally, um, a director of photography literally got the last shot that we needed as the camera turned off. So we barely made the time window there uh, because we also had to move all of our stuff out by the next day. So it was about a 30 minute uh, set breakdown. And after that, I remember getting into the car with uh, my girlfriend who was helping me move some stuff back to uh, 
back to where we were hold basically holding all the equipment for the film. And I got in the car and I was still like shaking because it's like we barely missed that deadline. That was just one of those moments where it was like, thank God we were all in our game and then we were all very adaptable because, you know, if the crew, if the, all the crew members weren't on board, it would have been a complete clusterfuck, quite honestly. And this was just one of the biggest learning experiences that I've ever had. And I think the biggest takeaway is that, um, A, if you know that something doesn't really contribute to a script, cut it because it's just gonna waste time setting up um, and into your story as well. You wanna make sure that you're shooting everything to make a very cohesive story. And then B, time is everything. If you can get more time, take it. Never rush your production. Uh, even though you sometimes you get excited and you wanna get everything done early so you have more time for other things. It's really important to, to settle aside, I'd say at least three times as much time as you think something is going to take you because you never know what can go wrong. You know, God forbid, thankfully, everyone on the team was very talented and was able to adjust, but had it been any other crew, I don't know if I could have pulled this project off. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this behind the scenes look. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the perch at this point. It was definitely a learning experience for me and I'm glad that it got a little bit of festival buzz because I do think we truly created a very good looking film and uh, I think it's very competently made. And I'm just really excited to work with the Black Magic again. I mean, I love the shit out of that camera. It was the first time I used a cinema camera really uh, to shoot a film. Even on my last film, Last Stub Master, uh, I didn't have the luxury of that within the budget. So I'm excited to see where we can go from, from here. And uh, I hope that you guys got something out of this. And I can't wait to keep pumping out more content for you. Have a great night. warehouse broke down all the sets the props are gone the perch has wrapped principal photography ah oh, thank you for the good memories warehouse we are out of here light switch good night